Wow, this debate has really degenerated. <laughs> Somewhat like the uh, mosquito in the nudist colony, I'm trying to decide where to begin. Um, um, well, look, I am, um, I'm in no way offended by all these quips and so on. This, this, stuff, this stuff only gets me going. But I do think that the issue here isn't just the government, the American government. It's also a little bit of what the American founders stood for. Uh, and as libertarians, you believe they stood for liberty. As conservatives, we believe they stood for liberty. That's why we're trying to conserve that. Now, is liberty only good for us? Yes. And if so, <laughs> if so, if so, we celebrate, we have to distinguish, you may say, the unprincipled libertarian who believes in it only for me from the principal libertarian, which would be the American founders, who believed that liberty was a universal aspiration. Now, all men are created equal. Not just all Americans, all men. Go read it up. <clears throat> now, now, this idea of 9-11 as a police action, let's go get the guys who did 9-11. Memo to our opponents, the guys who did 9-11 are all dead. So if that's the war on terror as they see it, they may as well declare it over. What about all the hundreds of thousands of people coming out of the madrasas and the mosques, signing up for jihad, committing bombings all over the world? This is a little bit of a bigger problem, and George Bush, dumb as he is, at least realizes that. Now, this idea that we should pull all our troops home from everywhere and get involved nowhere, I mean, it's one thing if our opponents disagreed about Iraq, but if you took this idiotic principle and applied it over the past 10 or 50 or 100 years, is it, is it the idea that if FDR doesn't like Hitler, he should go choke him himself? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm facing opponents who insist on imploding themselves. I don't have to really defeat them. All right. Blowback. Um, look, foreign policy is ultimately about the principle of the lesser evil you sometimes ally with the bad guy to get rid of the worst guy. In World War II, we allied with the really bad guy, Stalin, because Hitler posed a greater threat at the time. We've heard all kinds of nonsense. We sold Saddam those weapons of mass destruction. In fact, we sold Saddam nothing. The United States diplomatically tilted to Saddam in the 80s, but why? Because it was the time of the Iran-Iraq war. The guy on the other side was Khomeini, who posed then, and I would argue poses now, a greater threat at the time. What about this idea about blowback? This is actually, I think, a case where our opponents have accidentally stumbled upon the truth. It is true. It is true that we are seeing a blowback. A blowback against what? Think about this. Are you telling me that the ordinary Muslim in the Sudan or Somalia or Islamabad is putting bullets on his chest and ready to go to his death because the Palestinians don't have a state? Give me a break. Are you telling me the ordinary Muslim is willing to kill himself because there are U.S. troops in Mecca? There are no U.S. troops in Mecca. The U.S. base is 500 miles away in the Saudi desert. It makes no sense. The radical Muslims are not saying that on the Arab street. What they are saying is this. They are saying that the United States is the global head of the unbelievers or the pagans. That the United States is exporting through globalization, through free trade, values that are undermining Islam, destroying the Muslim family, and corrupting the innocence of the Muslim children. Does even Ron Paul know how to stop that? You think that pulling our troops home is going to stop that? Their argument is that Islam is under attack, that the fundamental values that they stand for are threatened. I would argue that they're being threatened far more by the universal export of American values and American culture. I watched an interesting interview with a, a, a radical sheikh on a European TV station. Someone told him, Europe is more decadent than America. Why don't you guys focus on Europe? Why is America the head of the snake? And his answer was very simple. He said, because it is American culture that is spreading worldwide. Young Muslims don't want to crack Swedish jokes or go to French films. It is American values and American ideas that are at the root of this. Either we stand up for these values or we go down with them. Thank you. First off, uh, I'm just wondering whether I should still offer the vice presidency to Doug Casey. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
but, um, you know, 9-11, they say we don't talk about 9-11. Well, we try to put it in a perspective. It, it, it was a criminal act, and part of it was uh, it came about because and it was so disastrous, mainly because we have so little respect for the Second Amendment and, and personal responsibility for our property. If we would have treated our passengers and responsibility airlines like we do, uh, well, like we allow the banks control their money in their armored cars, people don't blow up and rob those cars. Why, if the responsibility had been on the airlines to protect their passengers and we didn't have the federal government taking over the security, the airlines might well have had guns in those cockpits and they probably wouldn't even attack us. If they did, they would have been shot. But now, now we use 9-11 for the excuse for everything, perpetual war for pe perpetual peace. So where we go, we go to Iraq. They've been wanting to go to Iraq for five or six years before that. The resolution for regime change occurred in 1998 under Clinton. So it was on and on and on. They were just looking for an excuse. The first meeting of this administration, they were devising plans on how to go in. Paul O'Neill couldn't believe his word, you know, the, what he was hearing. And uh, yet 9-11, the first meeting after 9-11, those in, up in the administration said, ah, this is our chance. And somebody said, well... They had nothing to do with 9-11. That's beside the point. Let's go get them. They said, well, you have to at least stage an, an, an attempt to go into Afghanistan and pretend you're going after Osama bin Laden. So they did that for a few weeks, uh, backed away from Tora Bora, let Osama bin Laden escape into a country that we subsidize, who's a di military dictatorship. We help them. They have a nuclear weapon, and they're protecting Osama bin Laden. I mean, it makes no sense whatsoever. They say, well, conditions change, so we have to change our foreign policy. Our foreign policy con contributes, con creates these conditions, and they, always, and they always will. I would like to put in a word for, a, uh, a, 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 for, a word for Christian non-intervention, because there is a just war theory which is very Christian, and it's very non-intervention. It means you don't go to war carelessly, and you don't preemptively strike a nation that has not attacked us. So I say this war does not in any way compared to the Christian justification of a just war. Also, if you're conservative and you believe you endorse this war, you should at least have respect for the Constitution and never go into war without a declaration so we can fight it and get it over with. You know, Michael Schur headed up the Osama bin Laden Department in the CIA and has written extensively about this. He is the world's expert on understanding uh, Osama bin Laden. He's read everything he's ever written. He has said since, not, since the debates have started that Ron Paul is the greatest enemy of Osama bin Laden, and he does not want me to win because it will ruin what he has going for him over there. Because his recruiting, it has skyrocketed. Before it was 100 or 200 crazy nuts willing to commit suicide, now he has thousands. And Zawahiri has been uh, heard to say and has written that they like us over there. They don't want us to leave because we're in their backyard. We're on their sand, and they can pick us off. They can, they can wear us down. So we have succumbed to exactly what they wanted. We are over there, and uh, we're not doing well over there. Also, understanding suicide terrorism is very, very important. Suicide terrorism has a, a root cause, and it's not radical Islam. If you want the, want the real information on this, you have to read Robert Pape's book uh, on this subject. He's done more research than anybody else by going back and studying every single case. The, the country that commits the most suicide terrorism is not Islamic. It happens to be Sri Lanka. And the countries that are most radical in their Muslim philosophy, Iran and Sudan, commits no suicide terrorism. And I was convinced he was wrong when I started to read his book, but he convinced me that that isn't the case. And he said the most important element to get somebody willing to commit suicide terrorism is occupation by a foreign force. <laughs> now, it is, it is true. We did not have troops in their holy city. But Osama bin Laden used that as a major excuse. He used the Middle East, he used the bombing of Iraq, which had been going on for nearly a decade, and he used troops on Saudi Arabia. But he didn't say Saudi Arabia, he says the Arabian Peninsula. The whole peninsula is holy land to them, including Iraq. And the confirmation of this whole idea of why they come here comes from none other than Paul Wolfowitz. Paul Wolfowitz said, well, we invaded Iraq, and he said, oh, that is good, because now we can take away the troops, take the troops out of Saudi Arabia, which was the incentive for 9-11, and we will just go into Iraq. What he doesn't understand, and this is what Michael Schur explains, all of Saudi Arabia is holy land. So the fact that we don't have troops in Saudi Arabia right now means nothing. We're still over there. So the incentive is still there. So there is, uh, there is so much it could be done and so much could be improved by following basic fundamentals. If, if it were true that we had to deal with the people most responsible for 9-11, it was not the Iraqis, it was not the Iranians, it was Saudi Arabia. Fifteen of them. So if you had to declare war, that's where you should have 
gone to declare war. What we have to remember is the basic fundamentals of this country and this, our Constitution is non-intervention. Mind our own business. We will be stronger and a lot safer.